What is up and welcome back guys. Today again, guess what? We're working on the Forester. It's kind of a regular thing now on this channel. But today we're going to um, start, actually we're going to finish a job that we've um, been doing for the last like three or four videos. The roof. So we're going to um, eventually, we're going to wet sand it and get it all shiny. The one thing that we won't be doing today is going to be polishing it because we'll probably be doing that later um, with a full seal of the whole color and a whole um, cut and polish. But anyways, before we do that, we're going to finish up something that I didn't do last video is taking off the roof rails. So the roof rails, um, they're actually bolted on. They kind of look like they're part of the unibody, but they're not. Um, I don't think Subaru sold this year without the roof rails, but you can remove them. So it's a bolt here, a bolt here. Um, one right there and then one at the very end. So it's a total of I believe five bolts and it looks like they're actually red thread locked on. They're not. Um, I tried taking one off and it was super easy so that shouldn't be too bad. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop that off before we wet sand just so we can get a little more angle and then we'll finish up the wet sanding but it looks crazy in here with no headliner, no pillars at all. Kind of looks like we're doing something really cool. Thankfully on this one now I can go get the impact and undo it, but some of these have this guy here so I can't. And I don't want to remove this because I did this on the STI and I actually bolt, broke a bolt in here. Which wasn't a big deal because this actually doesn't have the handles anymore on the STI because I wanted a cleaner headliner. But this one will have those handles again so I want to keep it and I don't want to remove them all. So what we have to use is a wrench for a couple of them like that center one and that very front one. But these and the very last one I can zip off so it's not too bad. There we go, there's our 10 bolts, plus two more. So it turned out there's actually one like right back here to hold in this plastic. So there we go, look at that. I can remove it now. Comes off, so everything is now removed. So theoretically, yep, there we go. <laughs> if there's a Forrester crossbar, if you need it. Um, I want to try to reuse these plastic pieces, but it looks like there's bolt holes. So we might be using those bolt holes to do our thing we want to do, but this one should come off just as easy. Actually, wait, no. There's actually a clip right up in this very first front panel. And I found if I just twist it, I can pull it off, but I can't do that with a camera. So get this one off and then we're on to our next step. Hot. So there you go. There's our mounting points and there's our extremely dirty, but not rusty at all rail, which is actually, Something really good. I really didn't know what to expect under this rail just because it's been sitting here for so, so long. So that's good. And then there's our little plastic clip that was holding it on. I didn't break it actually, so that's good. So now we get to wet sand this whole thing. Also clean out these gutters. So before I start wet sanding, I actually just put some tape on it and cleaned up the gutters. So that's what the gutters look like cleaned up. So actually, they're in really good condition. I'm really surprised. You can also see, this is where they pinch weld. So there's gonna be lots of strength here. Nothing to be worried about if you're putting something heavy on the roof. And then I did find some couple of rust spots. I will do those off camera because you guys know what the deal of how to do them now. So there's one here and then there's one back there. Um, but we will fix those, but I'll fix them off camera because you guys have seen it. So now the process is for the wet sanding is going to be first wiping this whole thing down and getting it clean because as you can see there's lots of dust from sitting outside and as you can see it's also on my windshield. So yeah, I will work on that and then once we get that I will show you what we'll be using. There we go, it's all cleaned off. There is some hardcore orange, orange peel, so that's going to be fun to remove. And it also looks like particles or something. It's really rough. So wet sanding, it, we definitely got our job cut out for us, but we'll be able to do it. So what we have for our wet sanding tools today is I'm using a sponge to actually wrap the um, sandpaper around so you can actually like, it kind of conforms a little bit better. Um, and then we're starting off with 1,000 grit wet or dry. I'm going to be using a spray bottle to make sure it's always wet. And then we have 2000 to finish that off. At 2000 then we'll be using our polisher and with that polisher we'll be using um, Meguiar's 205 high cut with a high cut pad and that will remove all those marks from the 2000 grit because that is really high cut polish. So yeah, we will start with this. It's probably been like two hours since I start sanding and I'm still doing a thousand grit but it's kind of getting better so 
if we run our hand across, it feels like it's just not very smooth paint. Of course our like original stuff feels better. Really what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to take this whole panel and sand it down until it all looks about the same haze. I don't know if I'm doing that guys, that is a lot of work. What I've tried to do is make it so the edges blend, so like this spot right here. Um, so the edges blend pretty well, so that still needs a little work, but like see how it kind of blends together? And I can't feel that, so I think that's good. Because then we're going to hit it with 2000 grit and then finally some polish. And hopefully, hopefully we can get it done. But yeah, it's a little update. I've been standing for like three hours in the sun. But I think we're getting a little bit closer. I hope we're getting a little bit closer. So change of plans. It is getting um, dark out, so <laughs> there's no way I'm going to be able to finish this. But I still want to see if this is working the way I want it to before we give it in for today and work on it tomorrow. Um, so the plan here is I'm going to mark off a one foot by one foot. Kind of what you do when you test um, detail and same thing is you mark off a little patch and you do your um, procedure and see if that works. So we're going to do that. What we're going to do is we're going to, I just gave it another 1,000 um, grit. I think I went through some paint. I see primers so I'm going to have to cover that up. Maybe just use Sharpie or something at this point. But um, what we're going to do is we're going to finish up the sanding so we're going to do a 2000 grit in this little block here and then what we're going to do is hit it with our polisher I have the high cut pad and then I'm going to be just polishing it like that and then crossing our fingers and hoping that it actually gets somewhere so let me get the this is with the 1000 grit and that is with the 2000 grit so it's looking actually a lot more consistent which is nice the only issue is there's white spot there and a white spot there so I definitely went through but I guess it's alright, so we're going to leave this um, and now we're going to get our polisher and start to polish it with some um, high cut pad and um, the 205 Meguiar stuff. I said 205 actually meant the 105 and what we're going to do is we're just going to put a little bit, a little bit extra um, and then we're going to take this essentially and put it on our vehicle and go rub it around and kind of just apply the stuff and then we're going to check the pad so see there's some empty spots I'm gonna put a little more in those empty spots and then we can go ahead and give it a go there we go so a little more on those empty spots and then one more just make sure the whole area is covered with polish and then make sure the whole area is covered with polish and then check your pad. There we go, pads reasonably covered so we're good to go. From here it looks really shiny but you're noticing there is some clouding still there um, especially in certain spots. So like right up here it's really cloudy not like actual clouds, like there's actually some cloud, let's see if you can see my reflection, yeah. Right here, the stock paint, ooh, that looks really good. But the other paint, hmm, I don't know. So there we go, question mark. Um, I don't know if it's the paint or the clear or the sanding or what's going on here because we do, it looks like a little bit of orange peel just from like looking above. If it's kind of hard for you guys, it's actually really hard for you guys to see um, compared to the stock area that's absolutely glossy. But like, I don't know if it's really worth it to wet sand this for like days upon days upon days to get it to shine like that. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it for tonight and think about what I want to do. If um, I want to do it like that or not, and maybe check it in the sun tomorrow because from here, it looks pretty good it looks like super shiny um so i'm not uh yeah see there's a little bit of cloudiness but honestly it's even bit better than david's miata so i'll think about it but it's definitely better i'm just kind of i'm disappointed that i did go through that one piece of paint um so i don't know maybe i'll have to i don't want to lay down another coat of paint so i'll think about it and we'll um See you guys tomorrow, I guess, because we have more stuff. I think Adrian's actually going to come help um, 
tomorrow, so we'll probably be doing this and we'll be doing one other super cool thing. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and as always, peace out and stay humble.